Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the MGM Grand here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Mark Chinook. This is Boxing, this is Top Rank, presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. Uh, very excited to be with you this afternoon. It all goes down this Saturday, August 22nd on ESPN+. Plus. The undercards begin at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. It is Alvarez versus Smith Jr. for the vacant or for the lightweight world title eliminator bout. The winner will go on to face the winner of Umar Salamov, Maxim Vlasov for the vacant WBO championship. As I mentioned, the undercards get started at 7.30 Eastern. It's a bunch of battles of the undefeated. Robert Rodriguez, Abel Soriano, Anthony Loriano, uh, Julian Rodriguez, all of those fighters undefeated on the undercard. And then our co-feature, Vitaly Kovalenko, taking on former world champion Rob Brandt. Uh, it is an unbelievable night of fights as Top Rank returns into the bubble here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand. And I'm honored to be sitting with our main event fighters this afternoon coming to you live again from Las Vegas. Uh, Joe, I want to start with you, man. This is, uh, this is an amazing opportunity for you. We've heard a lot, uh, you're considered the underdog a lot. And does that get you motivated coming into this fight? Yeah, I mean, being the underdog, I always you know, feel like I have something to prove. And I don't mind it. You know, I like getting in there and uh, proving the world that um, I belong at the top and should be a champion. You burst onto the scene in 2016 with two huge knockouts of Fafara and Bernard Hopkins. How did that sort of set the stage for where we are today? Yeah, the fight with uh, from far, you know, I was like 20 to 1 underdog in that fight. And uh, I came out, definitely shocked the world with that uh, knockout. And it, uh, it got me here, you know, it got me all the fights and opportunities that I've gotten since. And, uh, you know, it all led up to this and this one's the big one, you know. I'm real, you know, real excited to be here and looking forward to getting another shot at a title. You had a huge win over Jesse Hart. That's obviously got to boost the confidence, right, coming into a fight like this? Yeah, same thing with Jesse Hart. I was pretty much the underdog in that fight. And, uh, you know, he was talking a lot, and I just, you know, kept it cool. I went in there, did what I had to do, and I got the win. And, uh, you know, uh, that's what I got to keep doing. <laughs> you seem to be on a, on a tear. I want to talk a little bit uh, about your personal life back home. Uh, it is a crazy time. You know, we're sitting here on a stage right now wearing masks, talking to each other. Uh, you've been able to maintain your training uh, to prepare for the fight, but you, you have an amazing business. It's a, a Team Smith tree service business, and your slogan's hilarious. It's call us last, we knock out the competition. Yeah. With everything that's been going on in the world, being back east, you know, with all the storms that have just come through there as well, mm -hmm. what's it been like for you to you know, just sort of roll with the punches, so to speak, with this COVID pandemic? running a business, training for world title fights. That's got to take its toll, but it seems as though you've been handling it, and here we are. Yeah, you know, this is the number one priority right now for me. You know, I'm just focused on getting this win Saturday night. So I trained, you know, very hard. I'm well prepared. You know, as far as the tree business is going, you know, it's definitely doing well, you know, due to the storms. You know, we picked up some work. It was a little slow for some time being because of the COVID-19, but uh, it definitely has picked up. And, um, you know, my father's out there every day, but he's doing all the estimates, he's running the business. You know, I, I just pop in here and there, but, you know, I, I haven't been doing much with the business. I've just been focused on this. What would it mean to you to win this fight and have a, a shot at a world title? It's everything, you know, it's everything I worked for my entire life, so, you know, the only thing, you know, this guy over here, he's trying to stop me from accomplishing uh, that goal that I have set for myself, so. Well, speaking of this other guy, I'm going to turn over here and, and welcome a later Storm Alvarez. Bienvenue, monsieur. Ça va? How are you, toi? Okay. We have a translator down here as well because my French is not the best, but I am going to jump in here and there when I can. I was about to walk out if you could do it that no, good. No, no, <laughs> hey, it's great. I, you know, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm from Canada, so I'm glad I can throw it out there a little bit. <laughs> A uh, couple of injuries in the recent years have kept him out of the ring. How's the shoulder feeling? That's that's priority for us. Comment ça va l'épaule, uh, Leder? Yeah, vous avez beaucoup de ble blessures. Comment ça va l'épaule? Mais ça va très bien. C'est uh, presque à 100% maintenant. Jusque uh, j'ai senti aucun douleur après la la récupération. 
he feels a hundred percent. He feels no pain uh, since the the recovery, so it feels great. Awesome, great to know. Uh, you said you feel you could perform better than you did against the fight with Michael Seals. Um, what can you do better than you did in that fight, which ended unbelievably? The, um, tu dis que tu peux faire mieux dans ce combat-là que tu as fait contre, contre Seals. Le combat a terminé, c'était incroyable. Qu'est-ce que tu peux faire mieux dans ce combat-là? Mais premièrement, dans ce combat-là, c'est mon retour depuis de 11 mois que je ne me bats pas. Et, euh, je voulais juste gagner, mais gagner bien. Si le, le combat est pour décision, je voulais gagner pour une bonne décision très loin. Et, mais tout le monde savait comment déjà arriver le combat, que finit avec un, un bel chaos. Mais je voulais essayer beaucoup de choses, mais effectivement, eh, pas sorti, mais eh, j'ai gagné le combat comme moi. It was his, it, it's his first fight in 11 months, so he's happy to be back. He wants to put on a good performance. He felt that the performance with Seals, he tried. He, he, he would have been happy with the decision. He was trying different things, but he got the knockout. That's what he felt best with. You know, obviously that was great for him. Uh, so now he feels good to, to pick up right where he left off. Born in Colombia, you fought in the Olympics in 2008, but for more than a decade now, you've called Montreal home. How special is Montreal? Because here we are doing a conversation where you're speaking in French. So obviously, Montreal must be home and be very special. What does that mean to you to represent Montreal, Canada? He said that you came from Colombia, you represented Colombia in the Olympics, but since the last 10 years, you are in Montreal. What does that represent for you, the fact that we are here and we speak in French? What is your connection with Montreal now? It's very funny because it's... C'est une chose spéciale parce que quand nous arrivons la première fois à, à, au Canada, à Montréal, ne parlait pas français, ne parlait pas anglais. Et, euh, les premières langues après l'espagnol que j'apprends, c'est anglais, mais j'ai parlé un peu euh, 50% anglais. Mais <rire> c'est une belle expérience, une belle expérience. Maintenant, je peux dire que j'ai parlé trois langues, langues di, différentes et, euh, espagnol, et français et un peu anglais. Et, euh, mais je suis très content de. de He started laughing halfway through the question because he understood what you meant. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's special for him when he when him and Oscar Rivas first came to, to Montreal. They didn't speak English. They didn't speak French. You know, and uh, he knew a little bit of English as best he could. But now, uh, you know, he's over ten years. He's learned to speak French. He's even better in French than he is in English. So he says it's been a special experience for him. And uh, here we, like you said, here we are talking in French. Amazing. Uh, with everything going on in the world with the pandemic, has there been any challenges to training and preparing for this fight with everything happening with COVID? Avec tout ce qui est arrivé avec la pandémie, est-ce qu'il y a eu des défis, est-ce qu'il y a eu des problématiques pour toi pour faire ton entraînement et préparer pour ce combat? Mais honnêtement, je pense que tous les le, le boxeurs, euh, euh, dans les deux premiers mois, avaient des problèmes pour l'entraînement parce qu'aucun gym ouvert, euh, mais c'est un peu difficile. Mais parce que c'est pas la même chose, j'ai dit toujours, c'est pas la même chose quand tout en train seul que quand tout en train avec l'entraîneur. C'est pas les le, le mêmes défis, mais maintenant c'est correct, nous nous, nous, nous content de que toutes les le, le choses après la pandémie commencent à être normal. He said it was hard for all the boxers, especially in the first two months to train because, you know, everything was closed. Uh, he says, so, you know, we have to adapt to that. And he says, now things seem to be getting a little bit more back normal. The gym is open. It's not what it was. And hopefully the pandemic will be over and we can get back to normal. But there were the challenges, but they did them just like every other fighter had to. Speaking of the pandemic, I want to I come back to Joe real quick. You're now inside the bubble with everybody here at Top Rank. And you can see the, the protocols that have been put into place. Top Rank has gone above and beyond to ensure fighter safety, staff safety. Uh, you know, it's, it's been an unbelievable experience speaking personally to be a part of this. Now that you're here in Las Vegas in the bubble, knowing that you're going to fight on Saturday without fans, is there anything psychologically that you're doing in your training to stay motivated, knowing that fans aren't going to be there screaming you on when you enter the ring? Well, during training, it's just me and my trainer all the time. So I'm used to being alone and training alone. So as far as the fans being there, you know, it is a little different because the fans, you know, they amp you up. But, you know, in the back of my head, I know they're all watching at home. So I'm excited to put on a great show for them. And uh, as far as the bubble so far, I, I'm enjoying it. You know, everything's going smoothly and, you know, I feel great. I'm going to say the same question over here, ask you the same question. Now that you've arrived in Las Vegas and you've entered the bubble here, 
at MGM. How are you preparing psychologically, mentally, knowing that you're going to walk into a ring with no fans and it's just going to be the two of you in there on Saturday night? Maintenant que tu es arrivé à Las Vegas uh, et tu es dans le boule de top rank, uh, comment que tu, se, tu, se, tu te sens et comment tu te prépares uh, mentalement et psychologiquement pour le fait qu'il n'y en aura pas de fans, il n'y en aura pas des amateurs de boxe dans, dans le building? Eh, écoute, c'est. Um Je déjà parlé de ça, j'ai parlé avec mon entraîneur Marranzi de ça, que c'est comme quand j'étais dans l'équipe nationale de la Colombie, quand on fait les éliminatoires, tout ce qu'il y avait deux ou trois gars dans les mêmes catégories, il fait l'éliminatoire ou Jin, il le fait juste avec les entraîneurs et, et les boxeurs. Je, je pense que c'est la même chose, je m'imagine ça. He says he was talking to this with his trainer Mark Ramsey about uh, qualifying for the Olympic team in Colombia, and they were due the fights and the eliminations in the gym with just the trainers there. There was no stands, there was no sale, so it was just in the gym, the two guys would fight, guy gets, a, you know, two, three guys are in the tournament, they eliminate each other, doing it right there in the gym with no fans. So he thought about that, and he doesn't expect it to be much different for him, so he says he's kind of used to it. That's great. Joe, what can we expect tomorrow, or on Saturday night? Just going to get in there and give it my all, and, uh, you know, plan on coming out on top. You know, I just want to put on a great show for everybody and have a great night. Awesome. What can we expect Saturday night? À quoi, à quoi il peut attendre samedi soir? Écoute, eh, eh, si, déjà je suis réaliste. Eh, c'est un combat très important pour moi. Je sais que c'est un gros combat. C'est un, un gros, eh, comment se dit, un gros défi pour moi. Mm. Eh, je voulais être champion du monde encore une deuxième fois. Et l'obstacle, c'est Joe Smith. J'ai besoin de battre lui. Eh, s'il gagne pour décision, très bien. Si, si le, le cas est arrivé, comme je, toujours j'ai dit, très bien. Mais je me préparer pour aller une deuxième fois comme champion du monde. It's a very hard fight. It's a very difficult fight. He's, he's going to be a realist. He knows that. He wants to be champion of the world again for a second time. He's going to do, whether it's by knockout or by decision, he's going to do, he knows Joe Smith has come to fight and that he's ready. And uh, he's going to do the best he can to win this because he wants to be champion of the world for a second time. Thank you. Gentlemen, I just want to thank you so much for your time this afternoon. If I could ask to have you both take a stand on that X over there for a, a quick photo opportunity. And to everybody at home, just a quick reminder, it goes down on Saturday, August 22nd, here inside the MGM Grand in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. ESPN Plus beginning at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. It is Alvarez versus Smith Jr. for the light heavyweight world title eliminator. Again, this is boxing. This is top rank. Thank you for tuning in this afternoon, and have a wonderful afternoon. We'll see you tomorrow for the weigh-ins and then the fights on Saturday night.